needs of this community, business needs to step in, be a part of the prosecution of the curriculum to make sure that every step along the way, we are arming students to move from the classroom to the boardroom to the whatever the job might happen to be. There's got to be a greater integration of business in the classroom while those students are ge being ready for a labor force. We also need to take a look at 21st century labor needs. When you take a look at certain surveys taking, a, taking place around the community and around the country, there is a void, there is a deficit. We are training for yesterday instead of tomorrow. And they can't do anything wrong either. And I'll tell you why. Because they're, all, they're being punished for using a cell phone or an iPod. And you see, the problem, is, and, and I think they're even being fined. I think they fine them something like 15 to $25, depending on, on the offense or the teacher. And uh, the parent has to come and pay in order to get that thing back. I really believe that the technology is there. And it's, it's unfortunate that right now there's a missing link, and we're not using that link. And, and we need to allow students to use the internet and use the, uh, their iPhones and their iPads because it's important. Right now, they're being discouraged in using that. And uh, to be quite frank and honest with you, uh, I really think we really do need to promote homeschooling. I think that's important because it, it, it lessens the burden the taxpayer because these students are being well again let let me go back to uh, when we were when we were talking about uh, a stimulus package for the country I sat at that table again I was a full chair the only one from Texas and argued for uh, money to go into into education we were successful we got billions of dollars in the Stimulus Act uh, to go to education because schools around the country were falling on hard times. God knows in Texas we knew that. On life, but I was also a product of the public school system and felt like I was fortunate to have some outstanding teachers and to uh, have a chance to be educated here in El Paso. And, and you know, uh, that's, that's helped me to do the things in life that I've been able to do. I'm also lucky to be married to Amy. Uh, O'Rourke, who's an educator and who's helped advise me on issues because she sees them as a teacher and as an administrator in terms of how the policies that we set at the national level affect us here at the local level. I think that the federal government could do a much better job not just in dumping money on communities and hoping that they spend it wisely, but in targeting that federal funding to where it's needed most. And I would argue in El Paso we want to target that funding to early childhood education. The more young kids that we can bring into the school system at an early age and inculcate a love of learning that will last their entire life, the better the outcome that we'll have. There's no reason that we should have only 16% of our population with a college education here in El Paso. Mexico is my opinion, Congress may, dis Congress may disagree, Mexico is a failed state. I had a meeting with some people from that I met in Miami uh, that were from Mexico, from the PRI and the PAN, and they tell me that the next president is going to be even worse than this president. So what does that mean? That means things aren't going to get any better in Mexico, unfortunately. So what we need to do, we need to really think about making Mexico a commonwealth of the United States. Thank you. I, I just wanted to clarify that we are talking about utilizing immigration for innovation, and how do we get to that? I, mean, I got that. I don't. I didn't get all, all the other stuff. But let me, let me tell you, I don't think we're here to be radical. Representing this district in the Congress is serious business. Um, and this isn't something new, and this isn't something that happened on our congressmen's, uh, or during our congressmen's first, or second, or third, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth, or seventh uh, terms. We're now in his eighth term in office, and he's blaming the gridlock in Congress, of which he's a part, for the problems that we still face. 
I argue that maybe it's because we have a congressman who has one of the worst voting records in the U.S. Congress. More than 95% of his fellow members show up to work and to vote more often than he does. He said earlier he's not a show horse and he doesn't pass bills. After 16 years and only six bills passed, none of which had to do with immigration reform or creating jobs or helping veterans or doing better for our community. You really have to ask why we're sending the same person up year after year, term after term, and expecting something different. Why, you must ask, is the leading reformer uh, or the leading uh, proponent of immigration reform in the U.S. Congress from Chicago, Illinois, and not from El Paso, Texas? I think we need to expect and demand more of our congressmen and hold that person accountable for the things that we